Hello again, welcome back to the clouds. Our land keeps getting battered by storms. I have tried pulling these trees back upright, but no joy. We need a better solution. Is there a way to stop them blowing over in the first place? The answer is a shelter belt. It might seem that planting a shelter belt is the simplest thing ever. Just take a load of trees, stick them in the ground and block all of the wind. But actually the way they work is kind of counterintuitive and blocking all of the wind isn't the best way to do it. Let me show you how. A shelter belt is just rows of trees and shrubs that have been grown to block the wind and protect what's growing behind them. Now a surprising amount of research has been done on how to grow the optimum shelter belt. We're going to use those results to protect our old trees and also our baby woodland. We're really hoping this tree doesn't get blown over. It's our biggest and oldest tree. It's a 180 year old sycamore tree and we'd be really sad if we lost it. You can see yet another tree just over there with its roots in the air. And I certainly don't want to lose this beautiful copper beech tree. Where else would we have a swing? Here in our shelter belt, we've decided to use a system similar to that shown in the Quarterly Journal of Forestry from 2022. Now, as you can see in this diagram, it shows an eight layer system, four of which are shown there in the diagram. It's intended to protect a field as a standalone shelter belt. Now, as we're using the shelter belt to protect a woodland, we're gonna use the first four layers. Now, as you can see in the diagram, each of the rows are about 1.5 meters or five feet apart. Then the row on the windward side is about one meter or three feet between trees. As you go further in, it becomes about 1.5 meters or five feet between trees. And then the final row is about 2.1 meters or seven feet between trees. Now these numbers are actually averages because what you want to do is achieve same species clumps of trees because that's what happened in nature and it looks more natural. Now we already have some shelter belts. We planted some more last winter. We're going to be increasing the number of trees in it to get the maximum benefit we can. So let's have a look and see what shelter belts are and how they work and how they might benefit you if your site's as windy as ours. Our land is very exposed here. The sea is just over that direction where the prevailing wind comes from. It comes barreling across the land and this is the first hill it hits and it often hits us quite hard. That's what's blowing our trees over. The beech trees that blew over in Storm Alley and Storm Aisha appear to be part of an old abandoned hedge. I think we're part of a larger enclosure for animals. There were some buildings over there. You can see them on old maps. We've counted the rings on these trees and I think it dates them to about the time of World War I. Now I'm guessing here, but it's entirely plausible that the men who used to maintain the hedge went off to fight in World War I. The hedge then became overgrown and was just left. Now the trouble with this is an overgrown hedge is that the trees are competing for light. They then grow up high in the sky trying to get to the sun, which makes them like flagpoles. They catch the wind and blow over. Beech trees as well are notorious for being shallow rooted and they blow over far more easily than other types of trees. But I'm hoping with our plan, we can protect the remaining trees in this hedgerow. Fingers crossed. It might seem like a solid conifer hedge would be the way to go, but it actually isn't. It is dead calm right here. There's quite a lot of wind on the other side of the hedge blowing towards you. But if I take five or 10 paces that way, it's actually really windy and quite swirly. What happens is the wind hits the back of the hedge, comes over the top and pours down in quite a violent way. Let me, let me see if I can demonstrate that to you. So you can see how water behaves when it goes over the edge of something like a weir or a dam or this overflowing bathtub. It's giving quite a hard time to the poor trees on the other side. Now, this is obviously exaggerating it quite a lot, but you get the, the idea. In reality, when wind goes over a conifer hedge, you'll get the benefit of slowed down wind or a dead space. That's about five times longer than the hedge is tall. Uh, don't worry, this isn't our actual bathtub. We don't bathe in the middle of a field. This was left here by our predecessors to water their sheep. Of course, now Hazel thinks it's a bath for her on hot days, but then it makes it really muddy and stinky, doesn't it? It's for this reason that the Royal Horticultural Society recommend not using solid fence panels like this, or a solid conifer hedge like this. What you really want is something like this, this deciduous hedge, this is beech. What happens with this one, instead of blocking the air totally and causing this turbulence and swirling problem, is the air is slowed down as it goes through the hedge. It will then gently mix back with the faster wind that does come over the top. It'll then have this calming effect for about 20 to 30 times longer than the hedge or shelter belt is tall. That's absolutely amazing, particularly compared with just five times that you get from a conifer hedge. Really extraordinary. We've looked at one end of the shelter belt spectrum with the conifer hedgerow I just showed you, and this is the other, an overgrown hedge. 
The hedgerows are incredibly popular with farmers and landowners in Britain because they help control livestock, provide shelter for them, and protect their crops from winds. They're wonderful for that purpose, and while the trees are quite young, or if they're maintained and cut as a hedgerow, they're really, really good. However, if they're left, like this one, and grow really tall into just tall trees, they provide very limited protection against the wind. The wind just goes around them. So while they look fantastic, they're really a very limited value as a shelter belt. So the sweet spot between conifer hedge on the one hand and overgrown trees on the other is about 50% porosity. Now porosity just means how much is there. It's really easy to measure. You just look through your hedge or shelter belt and if what you see is 50% sky, you're there. Now these hazel and field maple trees have been growing for about 15 or 20 years. They're planted by our predecessors and they're doing very, very well. And you can see they're roughly 50% porosity. Now here's an interesting fact. You don't need vast amounts of land to achieve this. Five meters thick is just as good at 20 or 30 meters thick, provided your porosity is the same. So you don't need a huge thick hedge or shelter belt to achieve a really good result. These beech trees will be cut up for firewood. That's a summertime job for us to do. Our ground is too soft to bring a trailer out here at the moment, and we've had an incredible amount of rain, so it would just make huge ruts across the field if we tried to do it. Now, the reason why we're gonna cut this tree up is because it's landed across our field that we want to use for other purposes. Now, not every tree that gets blown over gets turned into firewood. This willow blew over a couple of years ago, and you can see how all the new branches are going vertically, while the old main branches are now horizontal. I imagine where the branches are touching the ground, they'll form new roots. If it becomes sort of a multi-trunked kind of tree, it should be quite good. That landed on top of this older tree, but they both seem to be growing quite happily. We've decided just to let nature do what nature does. As long as it's not in the way that we need for something else, it looks good. Now, generally speaking, if a tree falls over or a branch falls off of a tree and lands on the ground, we're just gonna leave it right where it is if it's not in the way. If it's a tree, it might carry on growing like that willow. If it's a branch that's rotten and falls on the ground, it's a wonderful habitat for invertebrates and also for fungi. These are wood ear. They are edible, and we're gonna put them on the pizza we're having for dinner tonight. Last winter, we planted thousands of trees on our land, and a major concern we had was the prevailing wind. It is very windy here, and we didn't want to have thousands of little windswept bonsai-looking trees on our land. So we planted this, our shelter belt, on the boundary of our property. The idea being to slow the wind down, but also to help blend in our woodland with the surrounding landscape. We did this by planting smaller shrub species on the edges, like this gray willow, this hazel, and also elder. We planted them in natural looking clumps, the idea being that it will feather the edge of the woodland into the surrounding landscape and make it look natural. As you get further into the shelter belt, we have taller species like birch and alder, and this will give us the protection we need. We've also grown a number of these. This is Britain's only native conifer. It is a Scots pine. They'll provide shelter for us even when the deciduous trees have lost their leaves. Now they make up about 10% of our shelter belt. We've also got several big clumps of them elsewhere on our land. We are right next to a very large Sitka spruce plantation. So by adding some of these conifers in, it will help to sort of smooth that edge and make it look a whole lot better. So for my genius plan, I think we need a more dense shelter belt. This is looking pretty good, but I think we just need more protection for our trees to stop them blowing over. But we need a species that doesn't mind being in the wind itself and will continue to grow and, and do this job. As it happens, there is one. Once again, the answer is willow. Willow doesn't seem to mind blowing where it's windy or not. Lots of British tree species will grow very low and stunted, or even horizontally, if it's really windy where they're growing, and willow doesn't. This is a grey willow. It's a native British species, in fact, there's a number of them growing just over there. So we're going to go and plant these in clumps on the edge of our shelter belt. It's then going to provide us with a huge amount of protection and save the rest of our tall trees. We did plant loads of grey and goat willow in our shelter belt last year. They're both native willow varieties. We could have grown a hybrid willow, which would have grown much faster and given us more protection, but we want to keep this part of our land as natural as possible. Now, we decided not to put vole guards on our uh, willow trees on the basis that the odd vole nibble wouldn't kill the tree, or something tiny like a little baby hazel tree, it would have probably killed it. It does mean that there's a lot more trees here than you can see, because there's no tree tubes highlighting its existence. So let's get this guy some friends in the ground. So this is the first batch of willow rods we're gonna be planting. There's about 500 here. Let me show you how to plant them. 
planting willow rods is incredibly easy. You want a slope cut on the end so it will drive into the ground easily. Push it in like so. And I do think this is the only tree planting you do that involves a hammer. And there you go, 999 more. Right, that is a thousand grey willow in the ground. Didn't take so long. They will grow beautifully. This is exactly the kind of soaking wet land they really love. Well, hopefully all those little willow trees will grow quick and protect our trees. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. See you next time.